Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is not an internet analysis, but I'm gonna be chatting about my university experience because I am finally, finally, finally done with my bachelor's degree. If you're new to my channel, you may not know the um, challenges that I have faced in getting this degree. And if you've been around for a long time, I'm sure you remember some of my situations. So in this video, I just kind of wanted to talk about college because this is a very big, important moment for me. And it's something that I'm very proud of. I am 25 and I am just now getting my bachelor's degree. My actual graduation is in a week or so. It'll be on Zoom, so you know, it's not ideal, but there are a lot of people who obviously have graduated this year and will be graduating during this pandemic, so I feel you. But I will not let that take away from my joy and my sense of accomplishment. So this video is gonna be, I guess, almost like a story time, just talking about my path to getting this degree. And I'm also gonna make an episode on my podcast, which is called Previously Gifted, which was started in reference to being a gifted student and I started that podcast three years ago when I was at a very low point regarding my college journey, so I'll get into that. I'm making a podcast episode all about even more questions about college that I'm not going to get to in this video. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on higher education in general or specific things about the college experience, etc., those will be on my podcast, so please check it out. And quickly before we get into everything, I wanna give a shout out to my Ana Luisa earrings. In case you guys don't know, I designed these earrings along with Ana Luisa, which is one of my favorite jewelry companies. The Tiffany earrings are still in stock, and as you can see here, they are a mismatched pair of little mini hoops. There's a star and a moon, and these charms are fully like reversible or removable. My friend Catherine inspired me to wear them backwards, the way I'm wearing them today, where it's just plain gold. But I really like that you can switch them up any way to match how you're feeling that day. So if you guys are interested in checking out my earrings, just click the link in the description to go to Anna Louisa's website. Again, these are the Tiffany earrings. Maybe you want to consider, you know, a Valentine's Day gift for yourself or for another. Is it your birthday? Do you just feel like buying earrings? Any occasion is a good one. Okay, where do we begin? I was always a very academic child. I took a lot of pride in my schoolwork. I, you know, got straight A's for most of my life, but I never really knew what college would look like for me because I am a first generation college student. My parents did not go to college. So there was never really that pressure to have a dream school or have like a very clear vision of where I would go to college. I just kind of knew like, oh, I love school. Of course I'm gonna go to college. And then when I was a senior in high school, I read this book called Uncollege. <laughs> And I had this whole, I wouldn't call it a breakdown, but I had kind of a, a doubting moment, wondering if college was right for me. And I was very concerned about debt as a low income student. And I wanted to study film or video production. And I didn't know if I needed to go to college for that because I was still doing YouTube back then. So I read this book and kind of convinced myself that like, you don't have to go to college to pursue your dreams, which is absolutely true. College is not the right path for everyone, nor is college something that you have to do right when you graduate high school. There are many, many paths that you can take if you would like to pursue higher education in some way. I'll talk more about that, I think, in my podcast. I think there was also a bit of like rebelliousness in me at that time where I was like, I just don't wanna follow the same path that everybody else is taking and everybody thinks you have to go straight to college and I just don't want to. I just wasn't ready for it. And I do think that it's a good idea for people to wait until they're really ready to commit to college because a lot of young people, a lot of students do feel pressured to go straight to college when they're not ready or they're not interested. So I graduated high school in 2014. I wore my white robe because I got over a 4.0 and I wasn't going to college and I felt like a bit of an outcast, but I also felt very free and I took a gap year. So my gap year was nice. I actually really liked it. It was a time for me to just work a lot. I had two jobs, so I was working almost every day. I was still living at home with my parents, but I was paying for like my car and my groceries and my phone. And even by the time it was the next fall, so only a few months after I had graduated from high school, all of my friends were going off to college. And that's when I started to feel like 
oh, maybe I do want to go to college. So I took that time to start researching and seeing where I might want to go. And this is where I'm a little bit frustrated. I'll tell you a little bit about the schools that I chose to apply to. I wish my high school counselors or somebody had made it clear to me what my options were. We had taken like a college and career prep course in high school, like our freshman year. But I don't remember hearing like, hey, if you're a low income student, if your family makes below this income in California, you can get this certain scholarship that covers most of your tuition or your housing. I didn't know that. And if I had known that at the time, I think I would have probably gone straight to college after graduating high school because I would have gotten a good financial aid package. I obviously could have done that research by myself, but again, I was navigating the college process on my own. My parents didn't know anything about it either because I was the first of my siblings to want to apply to universities. So it just felt too overwhelming for me at that time and I just wanted to wait. So during my gap year, I started to do more of that research. I picked a handful of schools. My high school boyfriend at that time had gone to a school in New Orleans and we were long distance that year. I was working and paying to travel and see him and he'd come home and visit. And I decided, huh, I'm gonna apply to go to his school in New Orleans because why not? <laughs> So that school was Loyola University, New Orleans, which is like a small private liberal arts college. And then I also applied to Tulane University, which is like right next door. And this is the first major thing I wanna talk about because I got a lot of uh, criticism for it at the time. I would never recommend for anyone young to choose their college based off of who they're dating, of course. But at that time, I didn't really have a path. I didn't really have a vision of where I wanted to go. And me being a very romantic person, I was like, I wanna be with my boyfriend, I love him. And I'm willing to go and try out this new place. It's awesome to get the chance to move from California to New Orleans. That's random, that's cool. And if it doesn't work out, oh, I can just transfer, which was true, but as you'll see, a situation. So I applied to those two schools during my gap year. I also applied to Occidental, which is like a really expensive private college in LA. And I think that's it. Why didn't I apply to more colleges? Why didn't I apply to some UCs or some Cal States? California, in-state tuition. I don't know, can't explain my thought process. I think I got rejected from Occidental. I think I got waitlisted at Tulane and then I got accepted to Loyola. So then by the fall of 2015, I was going to New Orleans and I had visited there twice to see my boyfriend at the time and I liked it. I liked the campus. I met some of his friends. I liked the town and I thought, let's try it. <laughs> So I go to New Orleans and obviously it's a big major move. My boyfriend at the time's family was very supportive in helping me get over there and I really appreciate all of the help and all of their support. But still I was navigating college essentially on my own and I arrive there, I start to buy my stuff for my dorm and I wasn't prepared for how difficult freshman year can be. I don't think anybody really prepares you for how lonely you might feel or like, you know, the culture shock or the fact that it seems like everyone else is having the best time of their lives, making friends right away. For me, because I was going there and already had my boyfriend, I didn't really feel like I needed to make friends. And then I think I missed my opportunity to be more social. And then, yeah, I felt like everyone already had their friend group and that I wouldn't find my people. It's also a pretty small college, so I had maybe less people to potentially befriend. And my major there was digital filmmaking. It was the first year of that major, so it was a little bit clunky in terms of the actual curriculum and stuff. Um, and I was in a very small, group of people who were in that major, which in some ways was nice because it was like a close knit thing, but also I wasn't close friends with anyone in that group. So it was a little, a little tough to be in the same group and not have many chances to meet other people. By the way, if I cry at all or sound like I'm crying, my voice is so out of practice because I barely speak. I literally need to start doing like vocal exercises before I film. So even like a month into being at Loyola, I didn't really feel like it was the best fit and I was questioning things. And I made a video on my <laughs> vlog channel. I actually filmed a clip when I was 20, right there, new to school. And I left a message for my future self, which was my 25 year old self, which was my birthday like two months ago. 
So if you wanna watch that, go ahead. But watching it back for the first time in like five years, it was really sad to see myself trying to hide how sad I felt. Now the tears are real. I cry very easily, but I do, I get emotional for past me and I feel bad for the position that I was in and I felt so lonely. And then when I went home for winter break that freshman year, I had my first ever panic attack. And then I came back to school and I was dealing with anxiety for the first time ever. And it was really, really difficult. And I was physically sick and mentally not well. And so that definitely didn't make it easy for me to make friends or be social or be happy. So all around it was a very tough time. Then I was looking into studying abroad and I was also looking into my options in terms of transferring because I knew that it just wasn't gonna be a fit for me and that I didn't wanna stay at that school for four whole years to get my degree. Hey, by the way, my student loans were a factor. I think I was taking out about $10,000 ish of loans per year to go to Loyola and I just thought eek I would like to maybe find a school that cost me less so that was part of my decision. So my sophomore year in the fall I was still at Loyola and I got my study abroad placement for the spring so that was really exciting. I actually enjoyed my fall semester. I got to live off campus. I had my own room for the first time in my life because I've always shared rooms with my siblings and then I had a roommate in my dorm. So I had my own space and I got this little taste of independence and I turned 21 and I felt really good about myself. And navigating the whole study abroad process was so much. Again, I pretty much did it on my own. The visa and figuring everything out logistically, it was a lot, but I was determined to study abroad and I wanted to go to France because I've studied French since high school and it had always been a goal of mine. Side note also, my boyfriend and I had broken up and then we had kind of gotten back together and by fall semester of sophomore year, we were on really good terms. We were, you know, happy, but we knew that I would be leaving and then he had his own plan. So it feels weird to talk about him because obviously it's been years and it's weird to talk about old relationships on YouTube, but um, obviously he was a big part of my life for many years and he was a factor in a lot of the decisions that I made. Anyway, I leave New Orleans, I go home for winter break and then I'm going to France. And it was January 1st, 2017 that I was literally flying from New York to France and I landed in Marseille and then I went to Aix-Marseille University and I was studying in Aix-en-Provence and this was definitely the most magical semester of my college experience. It's the most typical college experience experience that I encountered. Again, as a low-income student, it is really daunting to even think that study abroad is an option. It did end up costing me a lot in terms of student loans and also my credit cards because that was what I ended up relying on once my stipend was gone. Long story. But I will say if you are a college student and study abroad is at all possible, feasible for you, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of scholarships and grants that you can look into. And depending on the location and what you study, there are a lot of options in terms of funding. So it's possible, but it's definitely a privilege to study abroad. And even though my parents weren't paying for it or anything, I still know that I was privileged enough to be able to get the loans to be able to go. Yeah, I loved that semester. All of my classes were fully in French and it was definitely the time that I challenged myself in terms of language the most. It was hard to live in a French city and actually have to speak French in the shops and at the cinema. And a lot of my friends were English speaking and we didn't really speak French with each other outside of class, but still I, I got the most language practice that I've ever had and my French level was as high as it will probably ever be. Unfortunately, I've lost a lot of it since then, but my semester in France was also probably my best social experience. I made a lot of great friends and we would go out and we'd go drinking or go to dinner. It was really nice to have a social group where we all relied on each other and we knew we could hang out and we were in classes together. So that was like the most social that I ever was. When the semester ended, I got to spend a few weeks traveling around Europe, you know, doing the backpacker thing. I literally had my backpack, I had my Birkenstocks, I had some Crocs and I was going from like hostel to hostel and Airbnbs and taking buses and 
it was like the quintessential experience, so I wouldn't trade that for anything. Again, it cost a lot of money, but I was at least traveling the cheapest ways that I could, so it was okay. I almost just forgot the biggest drama of it. While I was studying abroad, I had been filling out transfer applications because I intended to go from France back to California for the summer, back to my home state, and go to a UC or a Cal State. So I had applied to a bunch of UCs, I had applied to a bunch of Cal States, and I thought, oh, I'm for sure gonna get in because I have, I had great grades in high school, I have good grades in college, like, I'm definitely gonna get into some of these schools. And while I was in France, I was finishing up the applications and then I was going through the nerve wracking process of waiting to hear back. And slowly I started to get rejection after rejection. And I was so shocked because again, I expected to get in based on my stats and whatever. And I ended up being rejected from every single college that I applied to at that point. And that was devastating because I didn't know what I was gonna do. After I left France, I didn't know where I was gonna go. I didn't have a plan. I didn't know where I would live. I just had nothing. I thought that I'd be able to go to college and settle down in a new place and be in that routine and all of that got thrown up in the air at the last minute. I made a video about it. You may have seen it years ago, rejected from every college, not clickbait. And um, yeah, it was horrible. I mean, I was like laughing sometimes at the absurdity of it, but I still don't know the exact reasons that I was rejected, but I think it was something like, when you're applying to transfer, there are certain requirements, and I don't think I fit those requirements because I was coming from a private out-of-state university instead of like a California community college. So there were a lot of factors that probably contributed to that. I was definitely kicking myself because I was like, oh, this would have been so easy if I had just stayed in California and applied right there. Like I could have gone to community college. I could have done anything, but I didn't. Oh well. So then I left France. I came home to California and I had gotten a job to be a camp counselor in New York. So while all of this is happening, I'm like, now I have to go to New York and be in the mountains and not have Wi-Fi most of the time. And like, how am I gonna figure out what I'm gonna do with my life? In that time in between France and camp, one of the schools that I was interested in, UC Santa Cruz, had said that they could let me in to their film program if I could take a summer intro to film course with them. And I was like, well, I have to work in New York at this camp or I'd have to drop out of camp and go to Santa Cruz right now and like jump into that. And even though that would have been easier and more straightforward in terms of continuing my degree, it just felt too rushed for me at that moment. So I decided to pass on that opportunity and I continued and just wanted to go to camp. And then I thought, even if I have to take another year off to figure this out, I'll do it. So then I go to work at this camp in New York and I meet my boyfriend, Nathan. I met him on the very first day and over the course of the summer, we fell in love and then we're like, um, what do we do? You live in New York, I'm from California, yikes. <laughs> and this is gonna sound like another decision that might be questionable, but since I didn't have anything to go back to in California, I didn't have a plan, I didn't have a college, I didn't have a job, I didn't have anywhere to live. Nathan had asked if I, you know, if I wanted to, he said I could move in with him in New York. And I was like, well, shit, okay. I'm not quick to move in with a boyfriend. I had never lived with a boyfriend at that time. And obviously we'd only been together a few months, but I could tell things were good between us. And also, again, I was at this kind of crossroads point where I thought, what does it hurt? Why don't we try it? So yeah, this is another situation where I was criticized a little bit people saying that I always make my decisions based on my boyfriend and to some extent I can agree with that but also again it's a little bit of my romantic side you know when it comes to my relationship with Nathan especially at that time our only option was for me to live in New York with him because his job and everything was tied up in New York and his visa so it wasn't an option for him to move to California with me so if we wanted to make our relationship work Either it would be long distance or I could just move and start a new life in New York. And that's what I decided to do. So that would be the fall of 2017. And of course I get back on my college application grind and I decide to apply to a bunch of fancy private colleges in New York. I'm laughing because 
mistakes. I can't explain my thought process. I was thinking these things through and I thought that I was making the right choices, but no. I do blame a lot of this on the lack of transparency in the financial aid process. I really wish it was a lot more clear what you could expect to be paying if you get into a certain school. There's always these calculators and stuff that they tell you estimates, but like a couple of grand makes a big difference. Like, is it gonna be 10 grand a year? Is it gonna be 30 grand a year? Hello. So I continued to document all of this on my YouTube channel. I applied to NYU, Fordham, Pace, a bunch of other private schools in New York. And my thought process for that was like, I wasn't a New York resident yet, so I wouldn't get in-state tuition to public schools at that time. So I thought, okay, I'll apply to private schools and maybe they'll be generous with financial aid and maybe I'll be able to swing it. And this time around, I finally hear maybe the next spring that I was accepted into every single school. Yes, including NYU, which was really amazing for me. It was a good moment for my ego. I felt really proud of myself to get into all of these schools and I was so excited. But then I checked my financial aid offers for each school and it was just ridiculous. Like everyone would have cost me at least like 10 to 20 to 40 to 50,000 a year. And I can't do that. I am not willing to sign up for that much debt because that was part of my reasoning for transferring from New Orleans was if I'm not enjoying the school, I don't wanna be paying this much or taking out this much debt every year. So <laughs> I had applied for like this Taco Bell scholarship. I had been applying to other scholarships and just hoping that somehow I would win something and miraculously be able to afford to go to these schools and finish my degree, but it ended up not happening. I had to say no to all of those offers and then I was just still in that same position. And my YouTube at the time was pretty small. It was earning me a teeny bit amount of money every month and I ended up getting a job at Starbucks for a couple months and then I worked at the summer camp again the next year and I just felt so lost and like annoyed and I just wanted to be done with college or I wanted to have a job. I just wanted to find something and it just felt like finishing my degree was impossible at that point. So then fall of 2018, I decide, okay, now I'm going to apply to in-state New York public colleges. They have the CUNY system, which is the City University of New York. And I thought, you know what? Like, to be honest, I had always wanted to apply to like prestigious schools because I had always been good academically and I got good grades and I wanted that satisfaction of like proving to everyone like, oh, look, I got into this school. Look, I'm going to this school. And I kind of got that with my NYU acceptance, but the debt would not have been worth it for me, not at all. So I had to like turn down my ego a little bit and be like, you know what, at this point, I just wanna get my degree. And also because I was transferring and that by that point, I think I was 20, three-ish. I wasn't looking for the typical college experience. I wasn't gonna live in a dorm. I was already living with my boyfriend. So like, I just wanted to be a commuter student, go to school and get my degree as fast as I could. So I did that, I applied. My boyfriend and I ended up living in England with his family for a couple of months, which was random, but great. And then we came back to New York. We moved into this apartment and I started school at Hunter College. This is the first time I've mentioned my college on my channel because I didn't want to say it for privacy reasons, but now that I'm graduating, I can say it. I had applied to be a media studies major at Hunter and at all of my transfer applications and stuff. Sometimes I had applied as a film student, sometimes I had applied as media studies, sometimes like communications. Again, I just wanted to study something that I would enjoy and I wanted to be able to graduate. So it all worked out with Hunter. I really liked the program and the commute was easy on the subway. And I was like, all right, let's just get this degree. <laughs> When I first got here though, even though I had lived in New York long enough to be a New York State resident, I didn't have all the paperwork to make it like very easy for myself. So my first semester, which would have been spring 2019, I was only able to take one class, which was my intro to media studies course, which was like the opening class to my major, obviously. I didn't wanna take a full course load just in case my in-state tuition was rejected because then it would have cost me like way more money. So I took that one course, my in-state tuition ended up being accepted, my residency. So I could have taken a full course load, but I didn't wanna take that risk. Whatever, it's fine. I could have graduated a semester earlier. It's fine. So in that time since I took summer classes and then I took fall and spring and summer and then this last fall, I took all 
film and media classes because I'm a media studies major and it's the college of film and media but my minor it's not a full minor but it's like a focus my focus was film because again I've already taken a lot of film classes but this last semester was a lot because um, in a lot of film classes you have to watch a lot of movies so every single week for all of my classes I had to watch a certain movie and I did a lot of like writing and responding and and then it's like zoom university on top of that so that was really hard for me to adjust to obviously through 2020 just like everyone else and in the last year it was funny because I made a video um, in early 2020 saying like 2020 sucks basically and that was before the pandemic started I had no idea um, well actually coronavirus was on the rise at that time but I I couldn't even think about it yet because a total lockdown was not something that I imagined but I definitely had really hard times like mentally and it was hard for me to balance YouTube once my channel was growing my channel grew a lot in 2019 which was a blessing and it's been great but then to try to be a senior in college and make videos and the research that I put into my internet analysis videos I just couldn't keep up and then I felt like I was failing at everything and disappointing myself and disappointing my viewers and school's just hard sometimes and you know if you're dealing with any kind of anything for me it's usually anxiety it just makes it really hard to do anything so I was having a really hard time and then the lockdown started and for a while it was actually a bit of a relief for me because it was hard for me to go to school and at the very least I got to stay home which I didn't realize I would never go back to my college but it's okay then obviously the rest of 2020 had its challenges and ups and downs and I tried to just focus on let me just finish my schoolwork let me just get my degree let me just be done with this chapter finally after all of these years and after all of this bullshit and applications and rejections and nonsense so I finally finished the last like month of my last semester was really hard I just I, I could barely manage my workload I was really stressed I got COVID so I was dealing with my health anxiety and physical symptoms I literally was wondering am I going to survive this I was being a little extreme there but again health anxiety and then am I gonna get through my finals am I gonna pass my classes what if I fail my classes and then I have to take another semester I was just you know catastrophizing but I got through it thanks to my professors I got extensions on all my final papers except one and that was so helpful because I just could not handle the workload in the time span that they needed me to turn these things in so yeah it was such a weird feeling when I finally submitted my very last paper and thought like oh I'm done I mean it was at 2 30 in the morning so I was like Nathan was already asleep and I was just like by myself sitting there like I'm done with college I'm done I'm done with my bachelor's degree even saying it right now it still feels very surreal and again it sucks that I'm not gonna have like my regular graduation commencement moment but zoom is okay I still bought my cap and gown even though that's a ripoff I'm gonna take my graduation photos and then I get to move on to my next stage of life which is just gonna be work and hopefully posting a lot on YouTube but I'm excited it's really 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 satisfying and again as a first generation college student the first in my immediate family to get a bachelor's degree I'm very proud of myself as someone who was a low-income student and now is earning enough money to pay my bills and do all of this even before I had graduated and the fact that I was able to pay off a lot of my student debt and my credit card debt before I graduated was amazing and again all of that is due to YouTube so thank you guys so much for watching me and supporting me this would not have been possible otherwise so I'm just really trying to be grateful for where I'm at and I need to be grateful for the work that I have to do because honestly it is a pleasure and it's a privilege to be a fucking youtuber you know so that's that that's my college story um that was a lot but I just want to emphasize like there were so many times through all of this that I felt too old and I felt embarrassed that like you know some people graduate with their bachelors at 21 or 22 and a lot of my friends from my hometown had already graduated or were doing their masters or whatever and I felt like stupid and I felt slow in terms of like progression for the fact that I hadn't graduated yet but it's so dumb because first of all any age is a good age to go back to school or start school if that's what you want to do 
and you should never feel like you're too old to do it. There were plenty of people in my classes who were a lot older than me and they are badasses for going back to school and getting it done. Also, being 25 is not old. I'm trying to remind myself that like, yes, this is the oldest I've ever been, but I've got a lot of life ahead of me and everybody does shit at different times and there's just no sense in comparing yourself to other people in terms of these like life milestones that you think you're supposed to hit at an exact point when it doesn't matter. So my foot's asleep now, which always happens when I film in this spot. <laughs> If by some chance you would like to hear me ramble way more about college, you can check out that podcast episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, for any of you who are still in college right now or considering going back to university or getting another degree or anything, all the power to you. It might be the most difficult thing you've ever done. It might seem impossible. The paperwork and the hoops that you have to jump through are very annoying, I'm sure. But I just, I do hope that my experience can be comforting to any of you who are struggling because it was not easy. There were many times that I wanted to quit. Whether you decide that college is not for you or maybe it's for you later or you wanna finish it right now, any of those options are fine. Am I technically using my degree in media studies right now? Kind of, yes. Self-employed, talking about internet shit and media and stuff. I am just glad that I did this and it's over and I can, I can chill. And maybe in the future I'll go back and get another degree, but that is not something I wanna think about anytime soon, so we shall see. Okay, that is all. My voice is going, I should probably drink some water. Once again, if you'd like to check out my Anna Luisa x Tiffany earrings, please do in the description and stay tuned for a future video. Okay, thanks, bye.